Hey, what's up guys? It's Eli Knight here with Knight Jiu Jitsu and I'm here with the lovely Anya and we're talking about guillotine stuff today. And not only about little precision details to kind of like try to uh, sharpen the guillotine a little bit, pun intended, but like whenever we get into guillotine, why is it not working? Where's my angle going wrong? What do I need to fix about it? Uh, not only that, but maybe some other uses for it of how to chain it together with other attacks. Now, first thing I'll disting uh, dis distinguish or differentiate is between a standing guillotine and a front headlock. A front headlock is a little bit more leaned over for control here like this. So you can use this for snap downs, you can use this to pass to the side, you can use it for takedowns and all kinds of stuff. Not that a headlock can't become a choke, it absolutely can. We can do things like uh, front naked chokes and things like that. But um, for a guillotine, it's kind of the opposite because I'm driving the pressure up into the neck. So what's gonna happen on this here is once I get her head tucked in the pocket, and this can happen a lot of different ways. One of the easiest ways is if I have a collar bicep tie, I can step back on the side and push her head into this pocket here. I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna curl, and I want my forearm to find her chest and slide and rise up this way. Now, once that happens here, I'm gonna reach down inside in front of her shoulders with the other hand, and I wanna grab here on the blade of my hand, and I wanna to start to lift high elbow guillotine this way. I wanna drive my hips in underneath her and then flex this way. Now, um, a good detail is take my shoulder toward her shoulder on this side, even my head over here on this side, and the high elbow keeps her from throwing her arm up for a standard defense this way. So that's kind of a basic application. Now, problems that you're gonna run into, obviously, is like, how do we finish? You can finish this from standing, but um, I need to have kind of a, a base or a platform sometimes to be able to get her up against to be able to finish that. If we're gonna finish it from the ground, then we can finish it by pulling guard, which may be problematic in certain contexts, but may be the right answer in certain contexts. The other answer too is that I can turn it back into a front headlock and use it as a snap down and finish it other ways. But as far as the basic mechanics of how this is working, I wanna get this part of my forearm here. I wanna get that right across her throat. I'm gonna punch and curl it in this direction. And then again, I'm gonna grab the blade here of my hand, feel like this, and I wanna throw that right arm up and over. Now, if this is um, uncomfortable because of wrist considerations or shoulder considerations, uh, a modified grip that we can use, and I'm, I'm getting this primarily from my friend Brandon McCaffrey, and what it looks like is I'm gonna make this kind of uh, almost an okay sign on one hand. Once that's through here, it creates a little bit of a hook, and I'm gonna reach my fingers down, and I'm gonna get inside that hook almost as if I were rock climbing here. So once I make that little okay sign, I'm gonna grab this way. Now, what that does, it allows me to get that choke even tighter. And now the elbow, because my palm is down rather than palm flexed, it saves my wrist and it saves my shoulder. It also helps tighten. And then I can lean to the side and it's gonna be a very tight, nasty guillotine choke like that. So this is a way too that it's very helpful. Now, the other benefit of this is that sometimes when the arm gets stuck inside. Now, why would the arm be stuck inside? Maybe this were off of something like she was trying to tackle me, her head goes to the outside and I'm not able, because of the space, to get my hand in front like this. So I'm forced to go around the arm. Now, the problem with this is if I do kind of an old school traditional guillotine where I'm just pulling straight up into her neck, that pressure is not really going into her neck anymore, it's going to her armpit. So it's kind of funneling the pressure and it's not gonna get a really good choke from here. So um, what has to happen from there a lot of the time is that I have to get a different kind of bite and oftentimes I'm gonna to have to finish this from the ground. So either from a sprawl or from pulling guard. A common way that we'll look to set up the guillotine on the ground is from the guard. And this may be that um, from the seated kind of position, I just tuck her head and go. Or um, one of the most common ways is setting it up off of a uh, crossover style sweep or a hip bump sweep. Hip bump sweep, of course, is from here when she's setting a little bit too upright. I'm gonna come up to here. I'm gonna use my hip, I'm gonna trap her arm, and I'm gonna flip her over this direction. Now, if she doesn't want this to happen, then what she can do halfway through this movement is that she can kind of tackle back into me. So once I go here, if she tackles into me, I need to scoop my hips back so she doesn't put my back on the floor again. Now, once there, now once I've, I've curled over here, I wanna cut back this direction and punch underneath. The main consideration I'm thinking here is goosenecking my wrist a little bit. Uh, again, old school, uh, I'll call it old school or traditional guillotine for lack of a better term, is where basically you grab your wrist and you pull your forearm straight up into their neck and you push them away with your legs. This requires me on this way here to do kind of the opposite of all that. So I'm gonna cut back in, whether I go in front of her shoulder or behind her arm, depending on where the space allows me, I'm gonna fall off to this side over here. 
I want to try to keep my pec up toward the base of her skull. My guard is coming back up and you notice I'm out on the side. So it's a lot harder for her to push through or pull out at this moment. At this point here now, I'm going to curl that wrist inside with that little goose neck. So the snuff box going into her throat. My elbow is going to tuck toward my ribs and then I want to curl this way. It's very sharp and it's going right into her trachea. Now, the thing about this though is that it can become more of a blood like strangulation rather than just a tracheal choke because once I can press the trachea in that way, this bend of my wrist is kind of matching the ergonomics of her like, uh, I don't know if that's right, but it's matching the shape of her throat here so it's getting this side carotid, this side carotid, right? So whenever I get to that position, basically I'm getting out to the side, I'm pulling her in with my legs so that it sticks her head and neck in further. We go here like this and I come in here, either around the arm or in front of the arm. I'm curling this in this way, my wrist to my chest, and I'm tucking my tricep to my lat. So all these together make the compression that I need to be able to really get that choke. For several reasons, I may not be getting this quite effectively enough. So and one of the main reasons is if she takes this arm and starts to pull this wrist away from her neck, which is one of the most instinctive things to do. If she's doing that, then I'm gonna tug a war with her a little bit. And then once I'm gonna let her win, I'm gonna cut through this direction. Now, once I go here, I'm gonna either gable grip or I can go in for a full rear naked style grip on this arm over here. Whichever is the case, I wanna to start to cut back and I wanna hip out to the side and I wanna use this as a reversal here. Once I reverse, I'm gonna keep my leg inside here like this. I could possibly go to the mouth. I could sit out to the side, maybe get a neck crank like a cattle catcher. Um, or we can possibly even go back in and switch back to the guillotine from the mouth position right here. So there's a variety of uses for this move, typically referred to as the 100%. So one more time on this one. <clears throat> we get here, I'm setting up the guillotine and I don't feel like it's gonna happen primarily because she's defending the way she is. So I let her pull my arm out and I cup through for the underhook on this side. Her head is still trapped. I cup here to get my gable grip or my full rear naked grip like this. And as I go to sweep her over here like this, I cut back here and my foot comes inside here like this. A big thing that happens right here a lot of times is that her other arm gets free and she starts to weave that through the body because that's where the space is for her that she feels like she can escape. The problem with that, the good thing for me off of there, is that as she goes to do that, I can come up and I can use this hook that I had before as an arm drag and now I can take her back off of that reversal and that false sense of security that I gave her for that escape route that she So a modification on this, this can work from a standing or on the ground in a place you'll see it sometimes is from butterfly guard. If we're inside here like this and we're playing from here, I can snap her head down and I wanna get the gooseneck ready here like this. And when I go to snap her head down, and this is why this is such an effective choke, I get my arm over her neck but I also come underneath and grab my own forearm. So what's happening is here, this is on the back of her neck, it tucks, and I grab the outside of my forearm this way. This is the configuration. Sometimes this is referred to as the handgun choke or some other name, I don't know. So we get here, I'm gonna tuck her head down. I'm making a little handle over here like this. Her head goes into the hole, and then I grab my own forearm. Now, to finish the choke from here like this, I'm gonna extend my legs out a little bit, and I wanna curl my wrists toward me. The reason I'm extending the legs out is I don't want her to bunch me up and start to like posture herself back up. If I start to kind of extend the legs this way, it keeps her spread out so she's having a hard time posturing up and it really gets the crank on the neck and it gets that choke ultimately. So this configuration right here is extremely useful for a wide variety of contexts of the guillotine. Um, if we were also doing the same thing <clears throat> from her in turtle position, this may happen that I sprawled off of here. We just came up into this kind of turtle position at this point. I can go in and a modification on the, the choke now is because it's gonna be difficult for me to get this exactly because I can't really drive my hips underneath the exact same way. The thing that I'm gonna do from this position instead is a 10 finger guillotine. A 10 finger guillotine essentially is where I wrap here and I try to get all the way across to her far side jaw. I wanna get this hand underneath and I'm gonna use this. Now, I wanna curl in like T-Rex arms and I'm gonna curl both my hands back toward me. As I go to do that, I'm gonna flatten my chest and drive my hips in as much as possible. And it's a very sharp choke because it's all kind of tracheal action going in here like this. So it's a really nasty one. So again, here, once I wrap in, I get reinforced with a second hand. I bring my elbows tight together so there's not slippage out to the side. And then I drive my chest and hips forward and curl this back and it's gonna cut through her neck that way. So it's the guillotine. Slippage um, out the side. I know, I was <laughs> trying to make sure you didn't lose it whenever I said slippage out the side. 
the guillotine, though, it's important to note that it doesn't just exist from the guard. That's where people tr traditionally kind of think about it from there, but it exists in almost every single position. So other good places that we can look for it from, um, top side control is a really good one. If I've got side control here on top of Anya, and um, she may elect, if I throw my arm over, she may elect to get this underhook on me. So if she goes underhook this way, and she's starting maybe kind of like an uphill escape. So um, something that I can do in this condition is I can start to wrap her head this way, and once I wrap in, I'm thinking about getting my palm to my chest in this case. What I would like to do is try to re-pummel and get my arm back inside here. And then from my position here, I want to sprawl my hips in. And I'm, again, I'm gonna take my tricep back toward my ribs and I wanna expand my chest. As I'm doing that, I'm also pulling her shoulder down this way. So it's adding a couple different pressures together. There's still the, the guillotine aspect of it, which is ultimately what's probably gonna get the tap, but it's also a bit of a neck crank. So you have to be considerate of that or mindful of that anyway. So this is another good place where this can happen. If I've got both arms over and she's still trying to uphill escape, it's less common. But if she starts with her underhook this way, then I wanna staple this arm down so she doesn't really get that deep underhook. And I wanna catch her head as it's coming up. Now, from there, I can start to pummel this arm back inside this way. And now I'm gonna grab a hold of that shoulder and I wanna create the separation between my two arms, pulling this elbow back toward my back and pulling her shoulder down here, sprawling the hips. And it's a really tight, cranky style guillotine, so it's not nice on their neck, but it also gets the choke. That's um, quite a few details about the application, some applications of the guillotine, some varieties and variations of the guillotine. So hopefully if you're, uh, if you're missing a little detail here and there, this might help to polish it up. I think it's always good to have these little principles and concepts to apply as a grading rubric to your performance so that you can help, it can help you whenever you're drilling and repping it out, but it also helps you to reevaluate if you failed at something after the fact, after a match or a fight, then you can kind of go back and check the boxes and see, oh, I was missing this little point. Now we have some way to fix it. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. Uh, thank you, Anya. And uh, keep watching the Night Jiu-Jitsu channel. Share, turn on notifications, like, comment, all that stuff. Appreciate you guys.